I wonder what success is going to look like in your eyes over the next two days. Have you already reached agreement on the draft joint communique? Well, we are hopefully going to reach uh, agreement on the communique uh, later this morning. For me, this is about the huge opportunities of AI. If you think about how financial services in the City of London have so enriched the United Kingdom over the past generation or two, I'm convinced that AI can do the same thing for the UK over generations to come. But in order to achieve those opportunities, we have to reassure people about the risks. So you're going to talk about that communique later. What are the main sticking points? Well, I'm confident that we will get the, the communique uh, agreed. What this, this is about is analysing the risks. And for the first time, we brought together uh, the leading AI companies, the so-called frontier AI companies, alongside national governments and our security architecture. And what I'm hoping to do is we can reach a common understanding of those risks. And that's what we'll be discussing today. A range of buckets from societal risks to technological risks around weapons and so on, and indeed, ultimately, to consider this so-called existential risk. Is there a risk by looking at that existential risk? You're getting a bit distracted from the salient challenges of missing information and deep fakes. Well, that's precisely why we're dividing it up into different categories. So I would say in the, the, the most immediate term, it is risks around misinformation, disinformation, deep fakes. And remember, what AI does is it proliferates that, those risks. So it increases the number of people that are able to create those risks. Things that were previously pre just the domain of national governments, we're at risk from hostile states, many other actors going down to your proverbial kid in their teenage bedroom is now going to be much more empowered by AI. So we do have to take those risks seriously. And how would the output of this summit interact with Joe Biden's executive order or the EU AI Act or the G7 Code of Conduct? Well, we're closely coordinating with all of those things. So I was at uh, New York for the United Nations General Assembly a few weeks ago, and I also took the opportunity to go to Washington and met with many of the president and vice president's senior team to make sure we pull together and coordinate our efforts. This is about dealing with frontier uh, AI risks. There's the president's voluntary uh, commitments, which deal with AI more broadly. They also sit alongside the Hiroshima G7 Accords and other initiatives such as India and elsewhere. And indeed, many of the meetings that I've been having, for example, uh, with Singaporeans yesterday, is making sure that these all work together to deal with a risk that we have in common, but deal with different elements of it. Joe Biden, of course, isn't here. Is he stealing your thunder on AI? Now, I think it's actually the, the opposite. So this all came about, if, if you recall, from a meeting that took place between our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and President Joe Biden. And they agreed together that we would hold this summit. So our teams are working hand in glove together. And I think that, that's reflected in the fact that the Vice President of the United States will be here at this summit. Well, does his absence leave more room for Chinese officials? Will they get to attend all of the events over the two days? Well, the uh, Chinese delegation is very important because China is a major AI power. Uh, they will be attending many of the, the sessions. I, I do think that there are some sessions where we have like-minded countries working together where it might not be appropriate uh, for the, the, the Chinese to join. But we in China share these same risks around AI. No, nobody wants uh, some of the, the most adverse consequences happening, so it's right that we work with China. So they'll attend many sessions but not all, and they share the risks, but fundamentally they don't share the UK's values. How can you reach meaningful agreement on how to regulate AI when it's going to affect pretty much all aspects of life? Well, I think the, the common consensus we can find, and you'll see this today, is about a common understanding of the risks and of an evaluation of the risks. And that's why it's so important that we have the frontier AI companies here so that we can talk with them about where those risks lie, our concerns about them, and find a model for evaluating it as the technology evolves. We can't do what we've done previously, which is wait for the technology to evolve and then step in. But it is the case, to your point around China, that, that they have a different uh, worldview to us. And we're very clear-eyed about protecting 
our worldview, whether that is uh, democracy, rule of law, freedom. Now, some of those are not, as you know, going to be compatible uh, with China, and that's not going to stop us from doing, taking the steps necessary for our nation. Another controversial guest here is Elon Musk. Earlier this year, he called for a pause in AI development. By featuring him so prominently here, do you risk being seen to endorse his views, including on Ukraine? Uh, no, we don't in endorse many of uh, Elon Musk's views, but Elon Musk is an indisputable tech titan, and it's a sign of the importance of this conference that someone like Elon Musk is here, and it's a sign of what this conference is all about. I've been to many international conferences, as I'm sure uh, you have as well. They tend to be businesses or government. This one is bringing the two together because uh, AI is being innovated by those frontier AI tech companies, but there's a duty on government to protect its citizens against those risks.